So here we have move all zeros to the end. Okay, let's read the question statement. Well, the problem says, given an array of integers, ARR, the task is to move all the zeros to the end of the array. Okay, while maintaining the relative order of all non-zero elements. Fine. And one more point is mentioned here that changes should be done in place. What does in place mean? In place means that the array that we are given, we should only make the changes to that. We shouldn't use any extra memory. So now let's try to see the sample test cases for a better understanding. So here, as you can see, in this sample test case, we have one, two, zero, four, three, zero, five zeros. One zero is here, another one is here, and one is at the last. What do we have to do? The task is to move all these zeros to the end of the array. In the output array, you can see we have moved all these zeros towards the end. The relative order of the non-zero elements is still maintained. Okay, so it is one, two, four, three, five. One, two, four, three, five. Okay, we have not changed the sequence of the non-zero elements at all. Okay, and I have one more sample test case here. Well, in this case, you can see no zeros are mentioned. That means we don't have to make any change. Uh, as it is, the array that we have, we have to keep it like that. Okay. One scenario could be that all the elements are zero. In that case, to what can you move? That array is not going to be having any change. Fine. Okay. Let's try to develop a logic around it. Although it is being asked that we have to do this question in place, but if we have to make use of some temporary array, won't it be much easier to solve this question? Right. So let's see this approach first. So what do I have to do here is I will take under the consideration of this array and uh, what I'll do is I will fill this temporary array, but only with the elements which are non-zero. So I'll traverse through ARR. Let's say, let's suppose my I is here, beginning from here. I would keep my one at the zero position, this one, two at this one. Now I have zero. Once I reach zero, I don't need to put it in my temporary array. I'll move ahead. Now I got four. I will put that here in my temporary array. Then I'll put three. Zero is going to be skipped. Then five, I'll put five here. Okay. And then again, zero, zero is skipped. So once the traversal is done of this, a, uh, of this array ARR, then I would be, you know, left with this temporary array filled so far. Still the positions are left. Well, all these positions, you can explicitly fill these positions with zeros because these are only uh, going to be left spaces for zeros. Okay. We skip three zeros, three spaces are left. Make sure you are taking temporary array of the same size of your ARR. Okay, so this approach is quite simple. Okay, you can, uh, you can do this on your own. But the thing is, the question does ask that we have to do this question in place. We don't have to use any extra space. We have to make the changes within the array. Okay, so for that, how can we approach this? So seeing this approach, when we are using some extra space, what is going to be the time and the space complexity? Okay. Well, time is going to be order of one. Sorry, order of n because we are performing only one traversal, right? Talking about the space, well, it is going to be order of n because we are using one explicit extra array for our solution. Correct? A question does not ask that. We have to remove it. Now, for removing, what could be a better approach in your mind? Let's try to see this. What if I make some changes to my um, uh, to my pointers. Okay, here I am keeping this pointer, and this would be keeping the track of the position where zero is held. Okay, and I would replace it with the next value. Okay, let's try to understand it in this way. I have my i variable, or you can say i pointer, and I have to perform a, a little something wherever I get a non-zero element okay so here let's say i have one i've got a non-zero element right so I, I would perform something you need not to look here right now i move to this point i will perform one operation then i move to zero i will simply skip and i would go further okay this is how my i is going to be driven now let's see what function or what is the thing that we are doing here whenever my i is having a non-zero element. I would keep that element at ARR count. Okay. And how does count work? Well, count only and only 
moves when we have a non zero element okay let's see it using a dry run initially my count is kept at 0 and so is my i fine now once i have got a non zero element what will i do i'll keep a, like i'll keep this i th element at the count that means here it is going to be no change because both are pointing at the same position right once it is done this statement is done what i'll do i'll increase my counter my counter is increased for the next uh, for the next iteration i is also increased right nothing will happen so far because both are pointing at the same thing now my counter will increase and my i will also increase now here is the actual part this time no swapping will happen and whenever sorry i said swapping but no movement will happen of this kind but what will happen is that my count this count is not going to move it is going to stay here holding the position where the element should be a non zero element should be right my i will move for the next iteration but my count will stay here the moment i get a non zero element such as here what i'll do i'll perform this i will keep it at arr count so here this zero would be cut with uh, would be replaced with the value which is at i in our condition this four right and once this happens my count moves so my count will come here for the next iteration my i will move to the next element on this situation too you can see i has a non zero element so whenever i has any non zero element what will happen i will uh, i will keep that element at the count at uh, the counts position so here i'll have 3 right again when so ever i am replacing elements i am uh, moving my count and i is moving in every step because that is driving my recursion that is driving my iteration now at i at we have zero but in this case count will not move and no uh, this shifting is going to happen my i will continue its movement now at this point i encounters a non zero element yet again so when this happens i know where do i have to keep it at the position of count so this will be kept here all right and then after this i would move one step more i would get the zero right doesn't we don't have to do anything i will like uh, go past the array that means the iteration is done that's all now you can see your count is here at this position at your last non zero element well beyond this what you have to do is you again have to run a loop so that you can place all the values as zeros because you would have uh, such as this five you can have more values which are still um, non zeros which actually should be zero once we are moving all the zeros at the end okay this is how you are going to approach it now focus a little how many iterations are we are we performing here in the worst case scenario how many iterations would be uh, would be required here well for the usual cases you might have to only you know travel half way through or so but for the worst case let's say you have all the arrays to be zero all the elements of the arrays to be zero then for the first iteration because i do have to check for non zero elements i would go from this point till this point correct and because you would not encounter any non zero element your count would still be here so in the next iteration your count will begin from here and will end till here making all the values zero correct so now in this scenario the worst case you can say you are using two iterations here okay you are using two iterations here also if we talk about the complexity of it we are having two iterations that means we are going to be having order of 2n right uh, order of 2n time complexity which can simply be said as order of n right now talking about the space complexity well the space complexity is going to be constant that means order of 1 why because we are using no extra space here all right so let's also uh, see this approach is kind of very optimal uh, we can optimize it a little further but this op uh, approach in itself is very good as well let's see how how it is going to be implemented in code okay so seeing the code of it i have placed my counter as told and now i am moving my i from zeroth position till the end of the array all right every time i encounter a non zero value i will keep the arr i that means the ith value that i have at count at arr count simple 
and i would increase my counter only when i am performing this statement fine by the end my count would be placed at a point where like uh, from where after all the elements should be zero that is what i'll do here i'll take my counter i'll move till the end of the array and i'll make all the elements so uh, like in the path as zero simple so we've already discussed uh, discussed the complexity of it the time complexity is going to be order of n the space complexity is going to be order of 1 right moving ahead with how we can make it a little better solution okay in which we do not have to iterate twice okay for that we would be using the same approach but i'm going to tweak it a little instead of keeping just the track of uh, the next element and and uh, making the count go um, uh, like making the count go uh, one step ahead and copying the value i would swap them uh, i would swap them instead so in this approach what we will do is uh, we will going to be you know using the previous one only but with a slightly tweak method okay instead of moving the elements and uh, trying to copy the elements from the ith position to count i would instead swap them so that the zero that we have here also goes to the end of the array okay let's try to see that here assuming my count is kept at the zero initially and my iterations are starting from here again i have to only perform the operation when i encounter a non zero value okay so i have my count i have my i i saw at i position i have a non zero value what will i do i'd simply swap the i th and the count value okay both are same nothing is going to happen for this one again Count would be increased, it would be here, and I uh, the value I would be here. Again, because both are at the same position, no swapping will happen. It will happen, but it won't affect anything. Right? Then and I go here at this point. Now you can see your ith position is having zero. What will you do? Well, you are not going to increase your counter, you are not going to perform any swapping. You would just move ahead. You would just move ahead. That's all. Now you have encountered, you have seen this value. Okay, at this point, at this point, you saw again a non zero value. So, once a non zero value is there, what do you do? Well, you perform the swap. With which element are you going to swap it? With this zeroth element. Now, moving ahead, what will you do? You'll go here, right? You have encountered, and also the count will increase. The count is increasing. The count has come here. At this point, you have a non zero element again, and you have your Count here. You will again perform the swap, right? And then your counter will increase. Now, once you reach till this five, you again have to do this uh, the same thing once more. That you will uh, slash this zero, uh, like swap these two values. Five will come here, all right? And these zeros will be here. So eventually, the array that you would have is going to be one, two, four, three, five, zero which was the needed array okay let me just clearly write it once more this would become four this would become three and this would become five with the swaps right so i hope this approach was clear to you let's try to see how it is going to be implemented in the code so the code is written here what are we doing i'm placing my count uh, at the zero at the zero position initially and my eye is going to drive my iteration here at every time if i'm encountering a non zero value i would swap the two values right i would swap the two values and i would increase the counter for the next iteration okay so this is how i am approaching this question now how optimized has it become from the previous one in the previous one we were performing two like two iterations in the worst case but in this one even in the worst case we are only going to perform one single iteration okay so for that the time complexity would be order of n Talking about the space, we are not using any extra space. It is going to be order of one. All right. So let's try to simply run the solution and see how it is passing all test cases. Okay. So the code is mentioned here. I'm going to just compile it. Check if it does not have any error. All right. It is giving us the expected output. All right. We have reached. Uh, we have gotten the expected output. Let's try to submit that. So it has passed all the test cases successfully. So I hope you've gotten this approach, right? Uh, it does have a little trick that we are doing in the third approach, but it is simple if you're just going to dry run it yourself once. Okay, so give it a try. 
and uh, pass all test cases.